All right, hello everyone. Welcome oh, to up, 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 up. Theorycraft Thursday. We are a podcast. Oh, Do you know what kind of podcast we are proud? Oh, up, 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 up. We oh, are a up. podcast dedicated, dedicated rather. Dedicated. Dedicated. I'm, I'm dedicated. Yep. Uh, that's a. Uh, I was going to say a Freudian slip, but it's just a slip. Nah, uh, it's just a we slip. are a podcast dedicated to the short film "Eagles Are Turning People Into Horses." This is our 13th week of watching the wonderful short film by, by, by Jesus Christ. Wonderful short film by Britannic Productions. Mm-hmm. And again, we have to analyze why, what the motivations are of the eagles for turning people into horses. Is it really better off being horses? What about yeah. the KGB element? It's wild. 15 minute long film, but I, I'm still unpacking it. Yeah, and it's uh, it, it was it's a lot to take in. The biggest thing that tripped me up is that normally you would think it's that it's horses that are turning people into eagles, but this one kind of takes that old formula and flips it on its head entirely. And now we're dealing with like, what if it was actually the eagles that were turning people into horses? Yeah, you know, and, like it's just like I don't know, yeah. and that, that's that's a lot to really take in. And that was like, I know you managed to kind of wrap your head around it at week eleven. But I'm still like, I don't know, like I see a horse and I'm like, don't turn me into an eagle horse. And then I just like, I'm like, is this like a bias that I have? Am I incapable of really understanding something outside of my worldview? It's, it's been doing a lot to me. I, I don't know. Yeah, I think what, really, what we really have to do is we just got to pour a ginger ale out for our homies and that we've lost in the war uh, between the horses and eagles and everybody yeah. has been caught between. And then I'm at it. I'm at a ginger it, ale at this point. Yeah, that's a, a running theme in the short film. Hopefully, hopefully, a single person is getting this reference. I yeah. imagine nobody will. I've seen it. I've <laughs> Have seen you actually? It. it has a million views. Of course, one of them is me. That's true. That's true. Um, I love Britannic. Anyway, they work for SNL now, by the way. Oh, really? Um, that's that's super cool. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I like I googled this as soon as you said it. And I was like, oh yeah, this thing is great. Yeah, this popped into my head at like two a.m. one no, night is, randomly, this and this, it was, was it was one. glorious. Anyway, okay. yeah, we don't have Let's any ginger ale. Yeah, let's talk about Dota, because that's more casual than, you know, the Great Horse War of 20, whatever, 2012, 2011, rather. Never forget. Yep, never forget. Okay. Every date is better if you add never forget to the end of it, just saying. Yep. All right, so on that note, let's talk about Dota 2. How has your week in Dota 2 been, Mr. Sir Proud Esquire? Well, they buffed my bear. They did do that. It's been relatively one note, um, but... I just, you know, at a cursory glance, can you guess how many of the last Lone Druid games have been wins for me? And these weren't all since the buff, but like, okay, that's, I have 752 Lone Druid games. It can't be all of them. Oh, well, how many have you played recently? uh, Well, recently. um, Okay. So like how, how recently, like since Sniper got nerfed or since like Bear became playable? Since Bear became playable. Okay. Since Bear became playable. Well. I mean, it's it's a more impressive number if you ask before then. But I guess okay. So in the last like ten days, I guess, or we'll we'll, we'll do we'll do fifteen. I guess nine nine and zero oh right now. I think. But if you want to extend it a little oh, bit, you, okay, you gave me the answer. <laughs> yeah, nine. Oh, I yeah. thought you were going to tell me how many games there were. I was going to guess. Oh well, oh, I mean, it was it was all of them. I mean, I yeah, I know. All of, yeah, I knew I that was the answer. Yeah, I want all of them. Uh, but also, like, before this last change, before they doubled the jungle up, I was doing double Midas, and that was super fun, and I, and I won with that as well. And my only losses are, um, like, before the patch hit, two people randomed Lone Druid, like, two games in a row, and I'm like, just give it to me. Like, you know what the fuck? You just give me give me the Lone Druid. And they gave it to me, and I lost both those games, because it turns out <laughs> if someone randoms Lone Druid when he's absolutely unplayable... This was like before they rebuffed uh, Melee Druid and Range Druid was still just awful. So this was like a month ago. And I have like an 0-7-7 oh, se- oh, oh and seven and seven game and a 2-6-21. and 21. And then I was like, yo, Skrunk, let me try to learn how to play this Druid thing. And, uh, and then we played one game where I went double Midas and I went 1-6. and six, And I was like, okay, that, that didn't work for various reasons. But I was like, I was undeterred. I said, fuck it, Skrunk, we're going to figure this shit out. And he just thought it was funny. So we played another game where I went double Midas and I won. And then they changed everything, so there's no reason to go double Midas anymore. But the idea behind double Midas is hilarious, and it was actually good at one point in time, which I want to be known. That's fair. That's been my week in Dota. Also, I've been losing most support games I've been playing. Um, relatively unsurprising. I tried to play Dragonite again recently, because uh, I saw 
I saw like randomly there was um so, someone was playing and I saw CCNC was in that game and he was playing Dragonite and I was like yo Dragonite is one of my favorite heroes I'm gonna like maybe he's good maybe it's okay and uh he still sucks so it, it really wasn't it's not a great pub hero but I mean the hero's fun it's just like being behind on Dragonite fucking sucks dude like you don't yeah. do anything being behind like I don't I want to hit a motherfucker like for like a truckload of damage you know what I mean like when someone gets hit I don't want it to say 120 damage at like you know 30 minutes into the game i don't want to be hitting for 120 that's just not what i want in my life so that was fun play juggernaut oh man i've been trying uh i've been trying um uh what is it called maelstrom first on 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 juggernaut you go like phase aki wand maelstrom and then into the manta just to like farm really fast that's like instead of battle fury and uh that's that's been cool i've been been trying that out that's cool i played a phantom lancer game with you that fucking sucked right Game that was shit. a hard game. Was that game that I played OD in that game? Yeah. Well, I mean, I was eight and four and 23, but it was like, I mean, the game, it, it was unnecessarily difficult because I was Phantom Lancer. We, it was 46 to 26. It was not a hard game. We were against like a Dusa. What game was this? What did you I were, play? You were, o, you were OD. You were 26, three and 10. We played oh, yeah, with, I found um, who spooked? I guess that's that, uh, Nathan. That's Nathan, yeah. It was with Nathan, Peachers, Maligan, and yeah, and yeah, you you killed yeah, like everyone. You got like a rampage or something. Oh shit. Yeah. man, I actually want to talk about that game. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, so, the Ags. You went Ags on OD. Yeah, let's let's Theorycraft Thursday some Ags OD shit because I was giving okay. you like garbage for trying it out. I was like, you fucking it was stupid. Why would you try it? So good. Okay, yeah. so I admittedly I I saw Mid One play it, and he played like a really weird Ag centric build where he went. I don't. I didn't watch the full game, but I was yeah. just looking at snippets. Was, was it a pro match? No, no, no. It was like in okay. some you know nine K pub game. But okay. he built Aether Lens and Aghanim Scepter and an Octarine Core. Yeah, and a- was Aether just, Lens is good. And was just constantly doing it, and that was a bit too much too much for my taste. Um, yeah, but I actually honestly really liked it. I built it as a meme because we were winning really hard. Yeah. Um and I just want to test it out because it's new. And I legitimately, it saved me so many times and led to so many kills. Yeah. I would need to math out exactly how much downtime it is. But as long as you're not using them one after another, like on instantly, it yeah. is actually like, it, it makes you super, super evasive. Yeah. Basically. Well, the, like I got it in place of a BKB actually, because yeah. I should have built a BKB that game. But I said, all right, instead of BKB, I'm going to build a fun item that's going to give me similar defensive potential and be cool and i want to test it out (laughs) yes um so So it has what the the duration is four seconds right and you get mm -hmm. two charges every do both charges like shit it's either down independently right so so that it's a 12 second cool down so in theory you should be able to chain them like one every six seconds which would mean it has uh 66 percent uptime aka two-thirds of the time rather you could be yeah. imp- you can imprison yourself two-thirds of the time which sounds absurd i'm actually gonna it test is. it right now because if i'm wrong about that then someone's gonna listen to that and be like well these guys are just fucking stupid and they don't know what they're talking about and i don't want by the way something outcome. similar to that actually it's funny four people on our oh all five of us had agonyms on that team i didn't realize nice because um, yeah, i got it on pl because you know why not yeah um but it was it was one of those things where i honestly had very low expectations for it but i yeah. felt like i should have built it the next od game i played because i forgot and at the end of the game i was like man i should have built eggs what am i doing yeah um i it's also not bad to fit into the build honestly because od as long as you have blink midas treads and your hurricane pike you basically can do anything like you yeah. do get gradually and of course some games you need a bkb but the items past that, usually Shiva's and Moonshard and Scythe, those items are great and they help you do things, but they're not necessary to the core of the hero. So yeah. the Aghanims actually fits in decently well if you go something like uh, Midas and then Dragonlance or Hurricane Pike just straight yeah, up. Midas Pike. Um, or like, actually, you can go Four Staff, Blink Dagger, and then finish Hurricane Pike, but I prefer to finish Hurricane Pike first. Yeah, I mean, I'm also um, a Pike finisher. Yeah, so Midas, Hurricane Pike, then get Blink, and then you get Aghanim Scepter, and then in that game, I built a, I built BOTs right after, and then Scythe last, and then a Moonshard, of course. And yeah. it, it fit in well, like, it synergized, it came into a... So they, it came by, in, by the way, yeah. they cool down completely separately, so even if, so like, if I cast one, um, sorry, let me refresh her, so I do, I do an Astral, and then I'm gonna wait, like, 10 seconds, or whatever, 
Or, okay, so I do an astral, then I wait. Like, even if I wait 11 seconds till it's, like, almost up again, and then I do another astral. Um, okay, no, the, the cooldown is still going. Yeah, okay, so then I have... Do I have another one? Yes. Okay, yeah, but the, the, the cooldowns are totally... No, they're, they're totally dependent on each other. So if you do one back-to-back, you have to wait, like, 24 seconds. Oh, okay. Um, in practice, I will say, in the game, it felt as though I... As long as I wasn't stacking them, I basically always had at least one up, and then I yeah. usually had two up. So the, the way that I'm ridiculous. kind of parsing it is, like... I mean, Astral is both an aggressive and defensive tool, right? I mean, yes. uh, you could say it's it's defensive in you know both ways, or whatever. But anyway, like you can de- you can use it to interrupt an enemy or banish an enemy or whatever. But I mean, you also kind of need it so that in combination with your blink dagger, you can astral yourself and then blink out. So like anytime you do use Astral aggressively in a fight at all, like oh man, their AM just blinked on our uh, on our Shadow Shaman. I want to get him out of there, and then you astral him, and then they just jump on you and you die. But yeah. the the Ags is like. I mean, the Ags, so you, you can do that, and then you also have a save for yourself. Like, the, it's kind of correct to look at it and be like, well, like, you can work with one Astral, but it's just the fact, that, like, once you have two of them, it just, like, changes up what your hero is actually capable of. Like, now you can save someone and yourself, or you can save yourself and stop someone else. Like, it isn't, I don't know. Like, I feel totally justified in thinking originally that it just kind of sucked, but... Like, the way that it's good is so different from the way that every other OD item is. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't it, make you more OD, it just makes you, like, a different OD. And it's, it's like, super weird. Yeah, it was definitely a unique utility, and yeah. I definitely want to test out more of it. I definitely wouldn't say it's, like, suddenly core on the hero, but oh, yeah. I would say if you're not in desperate need of, like, a BKB, it's a good stopgap measure where it's like, okay, well, there's... I hope you can, hopefully you can't hear the thunder behind me. Jesus. Okay. Heard a little bit. Um, but yeah, it, it was nice. Basically, I would totally play more of it, and I yeah. intend to. I don't. I don't um, actually think I like Aether Blue with this because the Ags also gives you 750 range. Like the the thing I used to do on OD, um, I used to be really in, into Aether. I mean, I still am, but it was mostly when I was against like um, if I was against Faceless Void or Axe, like guys that I would want to just uh, I would just want to like a- oh, Axe Blink called someone from a while away. I just want to astral him or whatever. Or oh, we're against Faces Void. I want to be able to astral my teammate in the middle of that Chronosphere and shit like that. So I, I would go Ags for or Aether for stuff like that. But with the advent of Ags, like yeah, adding the range is nice. But pretty much the only thing that you're getting a cast range increase from Aether from is 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 your your astral right? It's like why not just yeah. why not just get the Ags? I mean, it's more expensive, but why not just get the Ags? Yeah, I agree. The Aether was a bit much. That's why I didn't do that. But um, yeah, Aether is pretty meme But yeah, I mean, 750 range, like, good enough. You're set. Just stick with that. It sounds good. Yeah, and you're super mobile, too. So, like, you can blink in and then, you know, like, theoretically, right, you could blink into a 1v3 astral two people immediately because there's, like, barely yeah, yeah. any animation. Then just kill the third guy. Or, like, yeah. you could have somebody out of the game for eight seconds, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, no, you'd be like, all right. It, it seems cool. It's it's and, interesting. And it has I mean it has 10 int and some extra mana on it too so it's like yep. of all the heroes that can actually use the stats from Ags, OD is pretty pretty far up there in ones that it's not like man these stats stats are fucking worthless. Like you get Ags on to buff Juggernaut ulti like what are you doing? What's Jug going to do with a fucking Ags worth of stats? Nothing. OD is you know it's like yeah, int sounds good, some 10 attack speed on it, some health and just like some flat mana. Sounds great. It helps me. I synergize with that shit. I'm all for it. Yeah, so that's probably... Ags that's, OD. So that's not what we're testing this week. No, it's not. We already tested it. It was great. Right, any, anything Granted, else that about, like about your week? That was like a normal skill bracket in a game. Yeah, um, it wasn't the best, but, you know, it was fun. It was cool. No, anything about I, your week, I, anything at all? I played a couple Winter Wyvern games. Yeah. That was fun. Great. Um, but, no, not not much. Again, I've been playing too much PUBG, honestly. It's cut into my yep. Dota time so much. Uh, and people don't want to hear about that. I, I realize we talked about that too much already. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I haven't played Tron this amount. And so, yeah, that, that OD game is really the standout for sure. Okay. And, yeah, then are just a bunch of random things. I've been trying to make Beastmaster work, and I've been winning my games yeah, on him. Yeah, I saying that. But, like, there were games I'd probably win if I was playing any offlaner, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um... So I'm I don't know how I feel about Beastmaster. Also, like I'm trying to, I really like the old school Beastmaster where like you invest points into axes and you get a soul ring and you do all these things. But and after the soul ring like buff, I yeah. was really keen on that. But as much as I want it to work, I feel like cla- excuse me, classic Beastmaster is better. Yeah, well, like, I think you said classic Beastmaster twice there. 
Yeah. You well, said I'm really yeah, into classic in Beastmaster, and now but you said now I think classic Beastmaster is better. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't realize I cut out for that long, but um, regardless. No, not. Anyway, yeah. I think so you, the classic new Beastmaster where you're just like, yeah, I just go aura okay. yeah, and Yeah, see, boars. when you say classic and classic Sorry, new, yeah, that's that when it gets a, that's a little confusing. But yeah, so yeah. not the axes, you, the beastie, you know, where he's, got, where he's actually a Beastmaster, not like, I got a pig, also axes. Yeah, and the level 15 talent to double boars is so good. Yeah, cool. yeah, that's Like, it's unreal how wild. strong it is. It's like, like, in at level 25, you get, like, a couple other shitty wolf summons, and Beastmaster's just like, oh, let's just have double boars and 15. Like, yeah. he's like, oh, that sounds good. I don't know. Like, I want that one. You can, not only are they good for, like, obviously dealing damage and pushing stuff, you can just farm a lane with the hero or farm a lane with boars and then farm yeah. a different place with the hero. Like, it's, it's yeah, kind of like four yeah, spirits. It's, it's, it's so how, good. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, that's how you play Lycan, too. Like, you farm jungle with your hero and then last hit in lane with your two wolves. Yeah, I love it. So yeah, th- that's those are that's cool. my things. Great. Um, let's hop into our segment today. Yeah, let's do some seggers. So seven point seven point oh six C came out. Got full disclosure. I don't ever drink like caffeine or Red Bull, but I'm drinking Red Bull, and uh, this is an experience. I don't know how Roland does it. Yeah. Um, but I'm I mean, coursing with energy. Yeah. Well, that's good. I, I told yeah. you to you know kind of cut me off if you got shit to say. So maybe you'll actually do it this time. Yeah, that was important. Oh, I'm just gonna cut you off to talk about Red Bull anyway. Yeah. Okay. So um, the let's see. So 7.06 came out. 7.06. Are we gonna talk C, about rather. that? No. Let's Sam. Would you let's talk, you talk about, about today's change? Yeah. Let's talk because seven because seven C is like talking about Dota stuff, and we're gonna pull that then after we play our game. Um, but we should, let's, let's do the, let's do the thing that happened today and then Dota stuff and then more Dota stuff, you know, let's get a nice, okay. all right. yeah, like get a nice, like a lead up to it. You know what I mean? Not like, here's all this Dota thought also fuck Sam. And then we go back to Dota thought. Yeah. I'm glad that you already know your opinion. So we've actually right. already talked about this on the Patreon episode that came out today. Yeah. So if um, you're just hearing this now, you're fucking, you're late to the party and you don't know shit. So give us money on Patreon. Idiot. Yeah, it was a very good Patreon episode. Is me or is Cyphus myself and Proud? It was yeah. stellar. And I was like getting homework done and stuff. Not only was it a good episode, but I like progressed on my life at the same time. It was kind of beautiful, if I'm going to be honest with you. It was perfect. Which I am. And anyway, okay. So today, the I, I guess I'd call it like a test patch came out where yeah. they experiment patch. Yeah, experiment. They, 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 they've done this before, actually, with oh, other yes. things. Um, yeah, but with, like, they made it so that in ranked all pick, and also in international ranked all pick, since that follows the same stuff, they yeah. made it so 25 heroes are instantly, uh, randomly and instantly banned at the start of every game, bringing the hero pool down to whatever, 78. Then you still have your votes to ban heroes, um, like personally, right? So you could theoretically have 30 heroes banned, although in actuality, you're never going to ban five heroes um, with with 10 people. Like nobody, yeah. so many people don't vote on that stuff. Yeah. And so then anyway, if someone bans the hero you want to ban, you have like five seconds to notice and then be like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's tough. And you accidentally pick it later because it's yeah, such and, a short and, banning phase. Yeah. Yep. It's pretty cool. Uh, anyway, yeah. So they're basically making it into reverse random draft is how, how I kind of think about it. That's where, not what it is at all. There's no well, reverse like, part about like, it. It's like it's random just, draft light. Yeah, that's that's better. Reverse is different from light. Yeah, reverse is right. It's like uh, reverse death is is like a sweet ass life. Revert like light death is you know like Princess Bride shit. Okay, all right. I'm not even not gonna me? delve deep into that one. But all right, I'm gonna eat we... some, some food. We do have um, now 25 years banned at the beginning, which means so basically the intention of this right is for them to or for Valve to be combating people who are spamming certain heroes or people that are complaining about specific heroes and being like, oh, you know, bristlebacks in in every pub, yada yada yada, complain, complain, complain. And this is their solution for now. I mean, random draft is a great mode and certain regions right. namely china play random draft much more than na like, obviously like exclusively almost yeah i mean at least in higher higher level pubs at lower down i mean you can find a match at any you know anything once the player base is big enough but like yeah china you they just, they just play random draft they like it more and a lot of people are kind of envious of that but like myself included yeah you can't start a trend like that by yourself right like if every 7k player in china is all playing uh random draft like or rather, if, there are, if every 7K player in Europe or NA or whatever is all playing all pick, like you can't just decide by yourself, I'm going to play random draft and find a game if you're also 7K. Like, it's just it's not going to happen. You're just stuck. Got to play all pick. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, 
Yeah, so there's some bands in it that just kind of take out heroes randomly now. So Pratt and I have very different opinions on this. Uh, yeah. As I'm sure any listener of any form of long time has realized, we have very different mentalities towards uh, Dota, and this specifically is definitely um, a point of contention. It I like it. it. Proud does not like it. Yeah, I that's think our preface. If we if this was a debate, I would be the pro and he would be the con, and we don't yeah. have a moderator because there's only two of us. So Man, it's that no is, holds those barred. are such biased names. Like one person is the professional, the other one's the con artist. I mean, I know that's not what pro and con mean, yeah, but I, like that's, that's how it sounds, right? Like I'm a pro, you're a con. Like ooh, no, ooh. You're, I mean, I'm sorry that Latin has. Uh, has oh like, no, I, hey, I'm just I'm just saying I'm just giving a meta say right now that like. That's that's what registered in my I head. I mean, that's that just how that works, though. That's just how like the root. Like, no, no, the... no. I, I understand that. I'm just I'm just saying, like you know, we think in language, Sam, and the quality I mean, yeah, of our we thoughts. Do. That's is just only how language as good works, though. As like the, the language has recurring language. themes. I yeah, I know, buddy. Hey, I know it's okay. Weird. All right, okay, all right. So make your argument for the con. Wait, the oh, pro okay. usually goes first in debate. I don't know. Whatever. I'm okay. pretty sure the pro goes first. The so. pro does go first. I yeah. like it because it encourages diversity in hero pools. It punishes people who do not have a wide hero pool and it makes the game more dynamic. It adds an extra level of strategy to the lane, uh, to the laning phase, to the picking phase where you have to have the ability to quickly look and scope out these heroes and say, okay, well X and Y are banned. Therefore C is better um i don't know why i, why I jumped to freaking c from x and y <laughs> but anyway um certain heroes are gonna be better rather than they would normally be because it's, it's like okay well you know nicks and silencer are banned therefore nah, it's not better. there i'm gonna big life stealer <laughs> yeah exactly so that adds that extra level of strategic metagaming before the game even really starts into the pick screen yeah so i like it for those reasons i do again uh you need to like okay if I've, you mean, I now you need perfect. to like address what you think my counter argument. Well, no, I'll give my counter. Okay, yeah. I mean, how, how do you want to do this? You could do. I mean, we can do some class where you like address what you think my counter arguments are going to be and provide your defense against those, or we could just have me go at this point. Um, I mean, we also have been timing it. Normally, you'd have like six minute openings, and then you have a we, three but, minute. Okay, but we're both in. Like, I may be a con artist, and you may be a professional, but at least we both are. You know, we're we're woke enough to know that time isn't even real. So why would yeah. we time anything in a meeting of minds? That's true. Time this is like on the construct. astral plane. Like there's no time on the astral plane, plane dude. I don't know how much X Men yeah. you've read, but it just doesn't exist there. Okay. I will I'm gonna I'll make like one quick last comment for yeah, this. Here we, is I'm that ready. What is it? I am interested in seeing how this pans out. I assume it's only gonna be for like a week or two, but I think the overall Overall, I don't think this is the perfect way to do it. I would like okay. in the future for them to take this experience and wrap it into something where they make bands more, um, I was going to say verbose. compete, compete Comprehensive. Rather. Yeah, I wish yeah, they refined the banning thing, system. As yeah. is now, it's like two heroes are banned Ma- every robust, game and I think. whatever. I think, I think we yes. want a robust banning system instead of this kind of skeleton, like, yeah, you banned three heroes and one of them got banned. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, because like I'm, I'm constantly, endlessly frustrated by the current banning system in unranked right. and ranked, etc. Yeah. So I would like to have a system where like everybody gets two votes, and then have some kind of thing where like, all right, if two or three people vote for the same hero, that hero is automatically confirmed to ban. Yeah, like a blind or ban something. system where if two people yeah. vote for the same, like everyone gets two bans instead of just one, and if two people voted for the same thing, hundred percent ban. If one, if you know, one person voted for something, fifty percent. Yeah, that's I'm cool with that. That sounds cool. Anyway, all right, I'm going to preface okay. this with saying that uh, this Christmas at my grandmother's house, um, I found on her table she had a kind of weird, relatively blocky 3D printed Pikachu. And uh, it's just like, you know, yellow, you know, dust, okay. plastic dust or whatever. And in my hands, I've just been screwing with this weird 3D printed Pikachu that I found on my grandmother's dining room table. I don't know how she got it, but I feel like it's important that people are aware that that did happen. So here I am. Okay, so I I feel like this is a little bit of a, to to coin a phrase that other people already coined before. It's a little bit of a, if you listen to the podcast, you know what I'm going to say. It's a little bit of yuck your yum shit. Like Sam said in his own fucking words, this is to combat one personifying and like engendering whatever his own issues are upon Valve. Uh, supposed to combat hero spammers. Like that's not, Sam, calm down for one. Two, I do kind of agree that it, it is something to deal with the fact that, oh, there's this one hero in every game, and that's kind of what um, 
what the bands were supposed to be able to do. Um, but then the result of it is if I'm a person who, you know, just like I want to play ranked and I want to play hero, whether I'm a spammer or not, there's just like a 25% chance plus bands that I'm just not going to be allowed to play, you know, whatever niche hero yeah. I just like decided I want to play. Like if I want to queue up for a game, like the way I, one of the main ways that I play Dota is I like, you know, I might just get like bored or whatever, not know what I want to do. Then I look at some videos, watch a pro game or something, uh, look up what some, you know, what, what some people are doing that are like good at certain years. Like, oh, there's a new build. That looks really cool. I want to try that out. So if I'm like, yo, this is a sweet new uh, Clinks build or some shit like that, I'm going to go try it. And then just 25% chance up, oh, Clinks is just, it's not there. Like, did that improve the game? I don't think so. Like, it literally took my enjoyment of the game and fucking like, like my reason for playing the game is now gone arbitrarily. Like, that's not a good system at, at all. Like, I didn't, I don't have a way to like be playing a ranked game. And you can say, oh, don't play ranked. Like, unranked games are not as high quality as my ranked games. Like, I'm sorry to say, I have not played a decent unranked game in like a year. Like, my solo, every time I'm, Sam's like, oh, yeah, I had a really good unranked game. Every unranked game I play is just shit. And it's not like I only tried once. Like, it's, you know, like once a month I'll go back to trying to play some unranked and I'm just like, ah someone doesn't get the hero they want to play they just like feed immediately everyone jungles 24 7 it's like all the issues in rank times like 30 i mean sam you probably have a nice time because you play support sometimes like if you're playing uh, yeah. support and unranked of course you're having a good time because you're the only support in the game so you're winning yeah uh, i almost never have intentional feeders i i generally i mean people flame the the yeah. real plague of unranked again i'll let you continue but the real plague is just smurfs people are leveling up smurfs yeah, that are like that also is, i'm level 14 issue. I demand mid, it's like, okay, well, you know, and it's a crapshoot. Sometimes they're, like, you know, vastly under the MMR, but they're trying to recalibrate, and then other times they're, like, 7k gods yeah, that are trying to make smurf. That's yeah, it's, the only problem I have with it, but anyway, yeah, I digress. Total, total crapshoot. Also, I mean, when you say, like, oh, yeah, I'm trying this new thing out, we'll try it in unranked, and then every unranked game is a bunch of people who are following that advice, and everyone's trying out stupid shit, and I'm yeah, not, like... it's kind of currently like that, though. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty absurd. Um anyway yeah so i it's just like that's that's not a solution go play unranked is just not a solution like that's fair ranked that's dota fair. 2 are, are good games unranked at least in all of my experiences uh in a solo queue perspective are just kind of not um yeah i mean that's that's like that's that's most of it if the if the main goal is to make it so we're not seeing these like vastly repeated heroes nonstop, a 25 percent chance to cut off these vastly repeated heroes doesn't really address that at all all that means is that, like, hey, guess what? Skywrath and Lich and Viper got, got banned this game. I'm like, okay, that doesn't doesn't help. I, I they still first picked fucking Terrorblade again. It's that's yeah. still what happened. Like Sven is, I don't know. Like it it hits everything that doesn't need to be hit just as well as it hits things that do need to be hit. And that sounds like a really silly system. Okay. What about okay? So you I, I mean, I like the like we're in agreement that just like making the targeted ban like more robust. Like that sounds yeah. great. I'm into that. Yeah, or having like a smaller pool of arbitrarily banned heroes at the beginning. I think 25 is a bit much. I definitely will it's concede a on ton. that. Um, or have 25 be banned and then have no personal bans. You just have to suck it up and be like, okay, these heroes are banned. Yeah. Move on. But the, the one thing, the one thing I don't like about the ban phase now is it's just like, oh, I'm gonna play this hero. I'm gonna ban one of the counters. I'm like, that's not an interesting dynamic. Yeah, that's true. Um, one of the things I actually, on your point that you brought up, if Skyrath is banned, I like the idea that, all right, I love Timbersaw, but Timbersaw has really clear counters, right? Or I like Axe has clear counters. Um, if I'm going to pick either of those heroes, somebody's going to pick Skyrath pretty quickly. I like the idea that if you have random bans, it's going to be like, all right, I'm going to play offlane. I would have played Beastmaster or whatever generic offlaner. But since Skyrath is banned, that opens up my ability to pick this hero that I like and enjoy and want to work on. Yeah. When in, in actuality, normally I wouldn't be able to pick it because I would immediately get counterpicked. I kind of like that, but that also kind of reminds me of like, it, it like kind of reminds me of like people not liking like Bastion and Overwatch or whatever. Because like the way that sh- or like Tor we run, it's just like one tactical decision that's like relatively minor and not incredibly difficult to make has incredible repercussions for like the entirety of the game that no one can avoid like if i'm like oh hey these counters got banned and i picked it like well you could say that's just because you're fucking awesome or it could be no one on the other team is a good tinker and just because the tinker bands are banned out the good tinker player now just wins the game and like you know no one on their or or someone on your team is like 
oh, well, I guess I have to pick Tinker, otherwise they will. And then they pick, it turns out that pub on your team's actually just a shit Tinker. It's just like, it just fucks a lot of shit up, in my opinion. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think yeah. it can definitely well, go either way. I better, do also, like, I really like random draft, too, so I'm a little biased. Yeah, anything that puts it in that direction. Yeah, I mean, and I And it suits I, my I play style. That. Like, yeah, you, you I like a having a, a, a lot of, a big hero pool, and I like playing different heroes. Like, I mean, if you go to my recent games, other than Bane and Ember Spirit, I have almost no hero more than three times yeah. in my last, like, 50 games. I, mean, I just want to break off for a second. I have been playing a decent amount of Ember Spirit, and I've been looking to play a ton of Ember Spirit, because he's just fun. Like, Ember yeah. Spirit is just the most fun hero in Dota 2, like, design-wise. I mean, Invoker is cool as well, of course, but just, like, across the board, oh, I want to, like, I want to have a bunch of fun doing a bunch of dynamic shit yeah. in a game of Dota. Like, Ember Spirit is fun as fuck. Yeah, and he's, he's so malleable fun. builds too. So not yeah, only is the hero fun, but the items are fun. Yeah, you can go different ways with him. You can be like defensive, you can be aggressive. I mean, they changed his spell amp and yeah, they damage talent a bit. Like, hugely. Yeah, they, they changed that. Like, yeah, e- even with nerfs, like no matter what, I'm still like, I love Sleight of Fist with Maelstrom and Blink Dagger with Fire Remnant. Like the idea yeah. that I can like blink and do some wild shit and then just Fire Remnant out every time and then have all these like Blink Maelstroms going around. It's so fun. It's, it's yeah. fun as Fuck, I love Ember Spirit. I'm not great at him, but I, I, that's like my current project. Is like I just want to I just want to play a bunch of Ember Spirit and just get really good at him. Yeah, he's one of my go to heroes. That's just like okay, I'm playing some mixed skill stack, or I'm playing party ranked, or whatever, yeah. and I just need to win. It's like right, I'm gonna play Ember Spirit, yep. and I'm gonna get a lot of kills and not die ever. Yeah, good and... at every phase. Mobile, he gets travels early. Like it's just across the board, super fun. Anyway, yeah, yeah. All right, I, th- I think we said all we can. Uh, let's let's go to seven of six. Yeah. Also, honorable mention uh, for us specifically, uh, this is going to screw us, uh, which is why we're changing yes. our hero combo this week. Um, yeah. As you'll find out, because we need to play specific heroes. But unfortunately, and this has happened before historically, that sometimes our heroes get banned or picked before us, and we have yeah. to abandon. But boy, yeah. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen tonight because I don't have time to play multiple games. Uh, right. <laughs> so, or I guess we could just abandon our first one. Anyway, yeah. okay. So, uh, the other part of our segment. I mean, seven point oh six C. Oh, do which, I mean? Do we want to touch the uh, the like input thing that they changed at all? It should like if it works out, it should just mean that you don't miss like queue up invoker spells and shit like that. That's kind of long and short yeah. of it, right? Yeah, basically, it's just improving the uh, speed at which it receives input inputs and queues up things. Yeah. So you're gonna have less fumbled keys, basically. Yeah, some blinkage initiations have been kind of weird. Um, and then Invoker, like, trying to queue up a bunch of spells at the same time gets super awkward. Um, yeah. But if it works, it should improve. Someone was saying that it, like, wasn't actually working. It was doing, like, the opposite of what it should. But, I mean, oh, I've, I'm a, it's at least good to know that Valve is trying to fix it, right? Like, it's not... If yeah, it's, they're a, aware If of it's the not problem. working out, then, I mean, they're doing something. So it's good. They figure that out now, and it'll be fine later. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's start cool. with the items before we get into the heroes. Oh, okay. So, Blade Mail, like we just hinted at, is no longer yeah. increased by Spell Amp. This is pretty much directly a nerf to uh, the hero Ember Spirit, and not yeah. a lot of other people. Quap Blade Mail, also to a lesser extent, um, yeah. was Most, mostly Ember. Yeah, uh, it was definitely a big Ember change. Uh, people we, we saw were going like straight Blade Mail. Like people were literally just going like yeah, bottle the, the, brown boots, Aki Blade Mail, or like wand Blade Mail or something. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people wild. stopped going Veil and started going the Aki just so they could get that fast Blade Mail. Yeah, so that's just an Ember nerf. Honestly, I don't even want to talk about that too much. Like it's still a good item, uh, yeah, of course, but it's and, not and like I'm, crazy and I'm fine OP. With it. Like, I mean, the, the fact that it kind of scaled late game was, in, was kind of a little bit weird. Like, once heroes, I mean, you don't need a ton of int for 1% spell amp. And there yeah. are a lot of heroes who gain just, like, a shit ton of int. So, like, a co-op blade mail would end up actually doing, you know, like, 120% damage or some shit like that. Like, maybe a, a little weird. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with that nerf. Sounds good. They already made it so, like, Bloodseeker's Q doesn't improve the damage of blade mail, which yeah. was good. Because that was Thank pretty God. absurd. So, yeah, whatever more that. Like, like when I saw that change, I was like, did we already do that? But, no, that was that was the Bloodseeker <laughs> thing. Uh, the other only other nerf was to Solar Crest. Thank God. Not, you know, we'll see if it's enough. Evasion reduced by 5%. It used to be 25. Now it's 20%. Chance for True Strike, strike mechanic has been renamed to Accuracy. And Accuracy that's has good. been increased by 10%. So Accuracy is now 35%. So for context, the way that's calculated is it it gives you a 35% chance to hit missed attacks. So if they have a, uh, if they have a 20%. 50% is easy. Okay, yeah, so let's say we had a 50% accuracy rating, and then the enemy team had 50% evasion. That would be effectively increasing our chance to hit by 25%. Yeah, 
right? Well, it doesn't negate their full evasion because the the accuracy is predicated on the yeah. amount of evasion it's, they have. Those are kind of kind of weird things to say because, like, if you're hitting fifty percent of the time, so like it takes us to fifty percent hit chance up to seventy five percent hit chance. That's, yes. that's how it would work out. Yeah. yeah. So it cuts it cuts the amount of like the percent chance they have to dodge by the percentage of your accuracy, not like not just like minus like uh, multiplicative. So like if they have fifty percent dodge, you multiply fifty percent by your accuracy. Um, so you multiply their dodge chance by your accuracy, and that's like the additional percent to hit that you now have. So like yeah. as you said, if you have fifty fifty percent to dodge, and I have fifty percent accuracy. Multiply 50% by 50%, 25%, and then I just add 25% to my current chance to hit, which is then 75. Easy. Yeah. Figured it out. Yeah, so um, we're not going to do the exact math, cool. but basically the idea is that if they have a solar crest and you try to counter their solar crest with your own solar crest... I'm being so not into this opponent, dialogue. That This is like such not a... This okay, just like anyway, makes it's, it it's very small. Like, it's yeah, it, going to change, on average, your ch- chance to hit by, like, 7% or something relatively if, insignificant. If PA buys a butterfly, you're still better off getting an MKB. Yeah. Um, it's just... It's, it's just I, weird. It just sucks. I hate evasion so much. This is, like, the evasion hater podcast, like... Yeah, well, I saw on Twitter someone else was, like, super mad at evasion, so whatever, we're justified. Yeah, there's There's just so many sources of evasion and so few sources of true strike that I hate Dota. There's like, there's Silver Edge only against PA, and then there's fucking like Bloodthorn. I'm like, I want to be able to build Daedalus again. Fuck you. Let me build Daedalus. I hate Bloodthorn. It sucks. Yeah, and both those items you only get at like 40 minutes, but people like Bristleback yeah. get his, gets his solar crest at like 15 minutes. Yeah, it's like, oh, like, okay, no. this hero takes no damage and has 40% evasion. And it's super cool. Yep, seems seems balanced. I, I enjoy it. Yep. yep, a fucking Sven, ugh, Raven Sven with evasion talent plus Halberd. Like your Sven is not allowed to have forty percent evasion. Like that's not that's not okay. Not like, Sven Sven doesn't get forty. That's just not like Sven doesn't get forty percent evasion. Just stop it. Get out of here. Ill eagle. Yeah. Okay. So our hatred of blade of uh, evasion is well known. Let's move on to heroes. And yeah, let's do that, dude. Here we do go. we? I mean, there's not that many, but do you want to just like? grab a few because we don't need to go through all of them most of them are pretty insignificant changes um yeah i mean we can roll through it pretty I, let's let's just like name them all real quick like yeah. ancient apparition the cold feet stun duration kind of whatever it's just it's, like better it's level way one. better at level one it's almost doubly better at level one yeah i still don't uh, give a shit yeah i mean it it makes him a little more viable in lane uh if you have like some kind of duo yeah. but yeah it it's overall not a huge deal but it definitely will make him a bit better in laning phase that'll yeah. be nice uh blood seeker four yeah, more base damage easy. So yeah, we've been seeing a bl- bit of him. I mean, base damage is a big deal, honestly. Yeah, like, and laning, especially if you're the jungles. Yeah, like, he does often jungle. That is true. So four base damage, and also that four will be affected by your like blood right or whatever. So that's five oh, base damage. Rate, yeah. Oh man, um, it's true. <laughs> clinks. Uh, what do you think about these clinks changes? Skeleton walk uh, speed more death packed changed a little. What do you think? Do it's buff. Uh, it's it's okay. I mean the skeleton walk thing like. I'm pretty cool at leaving Skeleton Walk at level three, so the fact that my three is a bit stronger is cool. It's like two percent stronger at Skeleton Walk, and but at level four, it's like one percent better. Like whatever, I don't really care. Uh, Death Pact of, I mean, obviously Death Pact got buffed, but I still think that the change to Death Pact from like instead of it, it used to just be like the path they were taking Death Pact in was the it it like very used to used to used to be at max level you would just barely like the the duration of Death Pact would end right as the cooldown for Death Pact was up. And then eventually they put it to, like, the fact that you could have overlapping Death Pact. So it's like, oh, I'm about to be in a fight, but I'm already Death Pacted. Oh, it's all good. I can just eat some right now. And then it would just, like, replace your buff, and you'd have a, you know, full, it's already up, ready to go. But now it's like, there's like 30 seconds of downtime in between Death Packs. Like, what the fuck? That's bad. That's, like, really bad. And it's not just like, oh, anytime a fight starts, you have a minute to end the fight. Otherwise, it sucks. Like, sorry it's 20 seconds anyway it's like so like if, if i st- if i if i death pack something i need to start a fight within like 20 seconds basically otherwise if i wait too long like if my death pact is down to like a 15 second duration and we're looking to fight i just can't i have to wait like 40 seconds and then find a creep 
and then go fight. It's just super shitty. And then he, it's it's also like his heel. Like the idea with Clinks is like you're fighting and then in the middle of a fight you death pack something because it's like off cooldown while you still have it. There's no period where it's like down. You're just like you're using it to heal. And it, it's also like you're sustained to heal while you're farming and shit. But now it's just like I just I'm not allowed to use it unless I know for a fact I'm about to fight in 60 seconds. Otherwise, every time yeah. I pop it, it's like if we don't fight within like 30 seconds, I can't do anything for an, for 85 seconds like it just it, it sucks it totally fucks up the tempo of the hero um so yeah, yeah that's this fucking sucks i hate this change entirely yeah it is interesting how changes that could be seen as buffs are actually not just because of tempo yeah. things and metagame things whereas yeah. yeah uh okay it's just like the rabid thing like if if i use my rabid and then i want to fight and my rabid is has like 10 seconds left i i can't because my rabbit's yeah. gonna go out once like once the fight is kind of in full swing and then i don't have rabbit for 10 seconds and i'm just sad yep uh okay cm five less movement speed whatever the hero's still crazy good she builds like a ton of movement speed too so who cares like it this is a negligible effect after like level one or i mean after like all you're doing is sitting in one place and jungling until you got boots anyways right yeah yeah uh doom infernal blade stun is 0.2 seconds long that's a 50 percent buff on the infernal blade stun whatever who cares i think that's cool i'm into that stun honestly like every time i use it it feels a lot longer than it ought to and now yeah. it feels like an actual, you know, a little bit of something, which is cool. Ember Spirit nerfs uh, the spell amp talent used to be 10%. Now it's 8% and his attack damage was buffed. So or his attack damage talent was buffed. So now yeah. you get you choose between 8% spell amp or 30 damage at level 10. So they're trying to incentivize the whole like classic Ember Spirit build where you're yeah. building Battle Furies and stuff. Too bad just, Battle Fury Ember sucks, sucks and is sucks. dead. Yeah, the, the way... I mean, they should just change the interaction back, right? Like that was like that was like no one is a fan of of that. The way that it it always cleaves in one direction, like that killed yeah. him. Yeah, it was random or whatever, but like that wasn't a problem before. No one was complaining yeah. about that. Now it's just now it's just plain fucking bad. So I'm I'm not not a big fan of that way of rebalancing. Also, like okay, compare the concept: eight percent spell amp to thirty damage. Eight percent spell amp is never not 8% spell. It's always going to increase your damage by that percentage. 30 plus 30 damage, like, I stop caring about that pretty quickly. You know, like, yeah. once, I'm, once I've got a couple Battle Furies and, like, a Daedalus and shit, like, I probably would have been happier with the 80 or the 8% spell amp. Like, the damage, I'm not right-clicking that much early game anyways. So, like, the main reason to get, like, no matter what build I'm going, the 8% spell amp is going to have a better effect on that game. Like, almost every time. 30 is just not a big number. And, like, the idea is that the right clicky ember, the, the the battle fury ember, is better at like scaling. So why am I going to take this like like why why would I ever? Yeah, it's I was just like, why it's not it great. Sucks. If this was like yeah. forty damage, I, I would take it, but pro- like, probably that's still a decision though. Like I would still have to. That's still a tough decision, and that's absurd. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Especially like the tempo you're getting at, like level ten, you're not dealing attack damage, right? You need to get that spell so that you can go and fight and kill people. Yeah, et like your, your damage is coming out of your spells, and it's not like it's not like oh, I get that thirty damage, and now my damage comes out of my right click. Like no, the reason that Ember right click does damage is because of like the effects of battle furies and Daedaluses and shit, not yeah. because you just have plus thirty fucking damage. Like that's not how it works. So the so the idea is that this talent, it, like if it's if it's what you're going to get as a right click thing, this this talent needs to be like instrumental to helping you once you've got your battle furies and shit and 30 percent damage doesn't do that at all eight percent spell amp like that'll get you to having battle furies and shit right like your early game fighting is going to be mega buffed by the eight percent spell amp so even if you're not using it once you have your battle furies like it got you there it was it was was better i don't know that's that's yeah yeah. that's i mean i said all i could say 30 damage is always going to be worse than eight percent spell amp like it's a fact yeah also, like, Maelstrom and Mjolnir are just too damage efficient, and, like, they're just too good. Like, I forget, somebody, somebody mathed it out, and now I wish I had access to it. It was in some Reddit thread about Ember Spirit, where they yeah. were basically explaining that until you have, like, two Daedalai and two Battle Furies, you will proportionally get more damage hitting a decent amount of creeps, like a full wave and one or two heroes. You'll get more damage off of a Maelstrom than you will off of a Battle Fury, Whoa. Um, even though a Maelstrom about- is, like... 1400 just, gold cheaper you're talking about just damn like damage to the creeps because the creeps no, take 50 percent damage from the slight so that's kind of no just damage like, overall like damage okay. overall to heroes etc you are okay. proportionally dealing so more damage the, the creep reduction in that at all 
Yeah. Um, it's okay. just more damage overall. Yeah, because, I mean, there's yeah, more yeah. chances to proc it if there's creeps in. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, that, but that, anyway, that makes, it's that just silly sense. that, like, Maelstrom is so efficient damage-wise. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, gyrocopter. Flak cannon radius increased by 250. It's not 1250. That's just basically the entire screen. Homing yep. missile stun duration increased, so it now is 0.2 better at all the... You at know. max, and then slightly better at you know, earlier on. It's like 0.05 better at level 1, and then it goes up to 3 seconds. It seems kind of just like a numbers thing. They're just like, yeah, this 0. 0.2, 0. 0.4, 0. 0.6, 0.8. It's kind of weird. Let's let it go up to 3. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's that makes decent, more sense. Whatever. I mean, they keep buffing homing missile, right? I don't think we've had a patch where homing missile didn't get buffed in the last like year. Yeah. So, sure, whatever. Yeah, whatever indeed. Uh, IO overcharge health slash mana drain increased. It used to be 4.5%. Now it's 6%, which is effectively an IO nerf, right? Like, yeah, like, no, for sure. That's it's definitely intended to be a nerf. Yeah. Well, it's one of those things where you can read it and you're like, oh man, I mean, you're going to heal your teammate a little faster. Yeah. But which is like that's not the case. You're just minor. damaging yourself way faster. <laughs> so yeah. that's a nerf to IO. Um, of course, no way they don't nerf heroes after giving the Arcanas, but I guess it's because the Arcana was well, free. They, They're like, they, yeah, already, nerf they already did the Arcana and they got the sales. Like, if you wanted to buy the Ar- IO Arcana, you're going to do it. And now they can nerf him. Yep. Uh, our Lich sacrifice cooldown reduced at higher levels, same at lower levels. It scales all the way down to 18 seconds at level 4. It used to be yeah. 24 seconds at level 4. Um, a yeah, negligible like, difference at lower levels, though. I do kind of, I mean, creeps come every wave, right? And the fact that if you have three points in it, it goes from 36 to 32. Like, 36 is not going to mesh up well at all, but like 32, a yeah. two second difference is, is nice. Like, I, I could definitely, I'll, I'll probably sit at like three point sacrifice for Lich. Uh, I think I'd be comfy with that. Like, maybe, you know, two point blast, three point, um, three, three point sacrifice. I think I'd be comfy with that and then maxing the blast from there. Yeah, that would make yeah. sense to me as well. And then you yeah. don't need the fourth point, so you can get an earlier point in ice armor and all that. Yeah, that, yeah that's yeah. cool. I mean, going from thirty-two to eighteen is all is like a huge jump, but also like you know whatever. Yeah. Uh, all right, next one, big one, which we'll actually be talking about a lot today. Lone Druid Spirit Bear base attack time improved from one point seven, one point six, one point five, five, one point four to one point six five, scaling down yeah, to one point three five. So yeah, I'm glad you changed point the way you were one, saying that in the middle. Well. There. I hadn't memorized the numbers, so I was I was interpreting. But it's a point one uh, better base attack time. At yeah, at every level of the bear. At every so level. If you, if you didn't know, every time you level up the bear, its base attack time drops. Um, yeah, his, and, his muscles get better. I guess. Uh, fat. Yeah, yeah. Just think they get better. It was a it was a girl bear in uh, Warcraft or in the Warcraft three Dota. I'm I'm pretty sure it's just kind of whatever. I mean, mine's named Skronk, so I got a dude bear, I guess. But it's always weird when people. Like, talk about the bear and call it alfredo i'm like it's misha its name is misha that's that's what it was okay it was it was misha anyway so yeah the bear i mean basically what this means is it attacks at least when it's maxed out it is going to have seven percent more or it's going to attack seven percent more frequently at all levels uh, or at, at literally any circumstance like any set of you know if you had five moon shards on your bear last patch and now you have five moon shards on your bear this patch it'll get seven percent more attacks in in whatever you know time frequency but if your bear had no attack speed last patch and attacks and no attack speed this patch it's still going to get seven percent more attacks in. so my bear now just does seven percent more damage in the form of quicker attacks just across the board which is uh pretty pretty fucking great it's good yeah and it's an indirect, I mean, it's a direct buff, right, to the basic idea of damaging with the bear, but also it's a yeah. direct buff to having more chances to be applying on hit effects, right? Yeah, yeah, so you're you're better off, like, yeah, you're, you're better off getting, like, you'll, you'll get more bashes and more entangles and more mini bashes and that sort of thing. It's a, l- where that gets kind of weird is you say, oh, well, that makes Maelstrom better, like, e- no, it. It makes everything better. Maelstrom is a thing that does damage. So yeah, you'll get Maelstrom to proc more often. Similarly, your auto attacks damage will also proc more often. So like it, it buffs them in the same way. Um, but specifically on hit effects that like, you know, Basher is not competing with Daedalus for its slot, right? All Basher cares about isn't, you know, oh, does Basher do more damage than Daedalus? No, Basher just cares about whether or not it's going to be bashing. So that's why like specific, like the effect of on hit effects is like yeah. straight up better because of this but like not you know a damage proc or some shit like that okay that makes sense yeah. uh so yeah, he's just he's, he's better now he's good more damage yeah. great lone druid fun times also the, the bear does 75 percent damage to heroes um 
so like it's it's kind of shitty. Like oh, so the bear just like doesn't do damage to heroes. That sucks. Why would you hit heroes with them? But so he does less damage to heroes as the damage type. But his base attack time is one point three five instead of instead of one point seven. So like yeah, he does less damage to heroes through his damage type, but he does more damage to heroes through his base attack time because most heroes have one point seven base attack time. So it's like it, it kind of balances out at this point, which is cool. Yeah. Uh, all right, we'll go into Lundrid a little more when we talk about him since we're playing him, hopefully playing him this week <laughs> for our game. Yeah, that's uh, the dream. Marana, leap movement speed uh, increased to by four at all levels, 4% rather. That's the five second buff you have when leap lands. Yeah. That they used to be 10 seconds and then they nerfed it, so that sucks. Um, Monkey cool. King, tree dance cooldown decreased by 0.2 so you can tree dance a little more often base hp regen increased or doubled actually so he's 1.5 base hp regen and his level 10 talent used to be plus farmer but instead it is plus 10 percent evasion our favorite yeah. thing proud oh now, i was i was worried hero has that we wouldn't get some weird 10 percent evasion talent yeah. on a hero that we are that we know and love i'm just so concerned for this hero that already buys solar crest like what would he do if he didn't have an evasion talent like yeah that i need to buy my grim, mkp huh? at 10 minutes now because he's yeah. level 10 i need to God, well he's a okay. support so it's probably at 15 minutes you need to get your your mkb buy yeah um people will like try to offlane him dude he has 1.5 base hp regen you buy like four mangoes he's running you around just hang out in the trees anyways like, you're afraid yeah. of offlaners hiding in trees what if they are the trees you fucked yeah basically um okay go I've shroud actually seen aoe offlane monkey king it sucks but people play yeah. play it uh, go Shroud A, we got Necrophos, whatever. Cool. Next. Yep. Nyx Assassin and, Impale is one second cooldown longer. Uh, cool. Minor nerf. You know, whatever. He's getting a lot of play. Sounds good. Uh, Oracle's Oracle. still bad. False Promise, one second longer at all levels. Pugna. Yep. Life Drain, break range by 100, or increase by 100. Level 20 sure. talent is a little better. Nether Ward is an even more annoying spell than it already used to be. Great. If you are scaling that. Shadow Demon has some very small across, talent changes uh, no it was a pretty like across the board his talents got buff like his level 10 talent was 10 ms like that was the best yeah. one <laughs> and now it's 20 like yeah. that's literally twice as good that's actually maybe pickable and then six strength to plus 10 like okay now he gets 200 health as a talent instead of fucking okay 120. Man, like, i was trying to like rush good. through him because you started yeah. rushing me <laughs> well yeah i, I was <laughs> because they were boring this is actually a good one level yeah. 15 level 15 the spell lamp is like decent I was listening to like Purge talk about spell lamp on, on Shadow Demon when one of his patch reviews, and it was just like, like what this hero actually doesn't do damage late game. Like, yeah, you have demonic purge or whatever, but late game it's like impossible to stack up a bunch of shadow poison, right? Like, it just doesn't happen at fifty minutes into the game. So, like, the, the spell lamp is honestly like not that big a deal unless you have like ags and shit, right? Like, that's that's the only thing yeah. that's really affected by your spell lamp. Um, so you know whatever, it's like cast range or spell lamp. I think you probably go cast range still, right? Like, you're just you're not a damage dealer yeah i i agree with that i'll go yeah that's, uh, they're, that's they've it. been buffing shadow poison like they nerfed into the ground and now they're steadily building it back up but it's still yeah. kind of like ugh, i don't know i'm not a, yeah. not a huge fan you got a magic resistance talent buff whatever those talents are mostly trash but that's that's kind of nice i guess yeah and they've been gradually nerfing illusion strats to target other heroes but yeah. shadow demon is also nerfed by these even though his illusions are like significantly nerfed as well you know like in addition so yeah. shadow Demon's in a weird place right now yeah, cast point uh, increase on shadow poison, whatever. Sounds nice. Cool. Yeah, hey, yeah. Skyrath. I mean, they're all buffs, right? It's good. Skywrath, yeah. arcane bolt, cast range increased by seventy five. Eh, whatever. Kind of wild. I mean, he can position yeah. safely. Whatever. It's super long already, and now it's just a little longer. Uh, level yep. twenty talent is now a choice between forty ms or twenty percent magic resistance. So nice change. Uh, yep, the movement sure. speed's nice. He's a real fast hero. Yeah. Like he builds a bunch of movement speed. Tree protector, yeah. ten movement speed reduction. That's a lot of movement. I kind of like this rebalancing because Tree, and I think, yeah, he was previously balanced around the fact that he didn't just gain move speed at level one, like, like he does with Nature's Guys now. Like Nature's Guys gives him ten percent move speed that he just didn't have before. Yeah, uh, before that got changed like that, and now it's just like every tree gains ten percent move speed as soon as they hit the map. So I, I think it's just like rebalancing to deal with that fact. And now if you're not in trees, you're going to be like slower than you feel entitled to be. But if you are in trees, you're, you know, as fast as you should be probably. Yeah. Yeah. You're like as fast as a regular decent speed hero, right? You're going to be at like 300. So yeah, still good. Uh, Trump Ward battle trans cooldown increased by five, 35 sure. second cooldown. He's you know, super whatever. popular right now. Yeah. Battle trans nerf is fine. Underlord is firestorm. The now smallest deals smallest number change in existence. Yeah. A point two over the course of like level. yeah four levels of change 
it, it goes it scales all the way from three percent to three point two percent. So yeah, all right, great. I mean, it's the difference of you know, yeah, a hundred I mean, health, a few yeah. couple hundred health. When you're dealing with the percentages of people's health late game, that can be a big deal, sure. Yeah, uh, Venomancer poison sting damage per second increased uh, from six twelve eighteen twenty four to six fourteen twenty two thirty, and his agi gain was increased by point two, which means means he's yeah. gonna have like what an extra couple armor at. Love, I, love I, I keep hearing these rumblings of like uh yes, Chinese players playing no a oh. piece of shit. I was that behind man, me. I thought that was a joke. You're so bad. Uh of these like there's some chi- I think it was newbie plays a lot of or at least a couple games of this like carry venomancer that is super weird. Uh and they got it because they drafted it by accident and just like tried something and it worked and they've played it a couple times. Um but I, I haven't seen it since. And since the, oh, uh, yeah, and the respawn time talents went away. That was a big part of it, is that you would get that, like, 60-second respawn thing. And you would have this, like, crazy wild Venomancer that would actually do pretty solid damage and push super well. And then you would just, like, respawn every two seconds. But I guess since there was no respawn talents, never mind. Core, Veno, never mind. Thing sucks. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Viper. people pick it, but it's not great. Viper, te- five Some, extra strength for his level 15 talent. Uh, whatever. whatever. I'll probably take 16 Agi anyways. I yeah. mean, at least now it's something of a choice. Warlock Chaotic Offering is a little more expensive and has a five second longer cooldown. So sure, small, yeah. small nerf. Little, it's going to be more noticeable, nerf. right? If you have a refresher, it's 100 extra mana. That'll make the difference, honestly. Like, you're really yeah. mana starved already. Um, or and then nerf how much mana like, it gives you. So and like late game, that gets to be a big deal. Oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, okay. Winter Wyvern. This is maybe my favorite change of the entire thing. Winter yeah. Wyvern, Arctic Burn flight duration increased by two seconds. So now you have eight seconds of Arctic Burn. That's a really noticeable difference. I've played one Winter Wyvern game so far, and yeah. it's, it's effectively like a 33% buff, right? Like, right. it makes all the difference, especially because you're trying to tag as many people as possible with this sure, in sure. a real, like, scenario with a team fight, not just, like, zoning early game. So I love this buff. It's nice. Winter Wyvern's slowly coming back. And uh, the Arctic Burn, like when you hit someone with it twice, it doesn't um it doesn't stack it or whatever, but it does refresh the duration. Yes. Right? Yeah, so okay, you so can Yeah. Current health is damage per second is okay, so it does it does eight percent of your health per second. So like Yes. And the duration is five seconds? No, there's something wrong with this, because that would be forty percent of your health in one attack. Oh, sorry, it does that cumulatively. Okay, so it's eight percent over five seconds. Yes. Okay, so if you kept it on someone full duration of your thing, okay, and it lasts five seconds, so it would go like eight percent. Yeah, eh, that's yeah, that's like that's pretty solid. Oh yeah, it that's, adds up, and yeah, yeah, it adds up. And the big thing is like six seconds. It's hard to tag everybody twice, but eight seconds you can realistically in a fight either tag you know four yeah. or five people once, yeah, or you can that's like that's like twenty percent of twice. someone's health reduced by magic but yeah like 20 percent of someone's health if you're just hitting one person but yeah whenever i play wyvern i feel like like if, if it's wyvern against an aggro trilane or something i feel like it's really easy to always hit two people but getting the third one is hard as shit but i feel like you know wyvern against an aggro try you're gonna hit three people every time with eight yeah. seconds to work with it's great and it's like a value yeah. point too so it's not like a scaling buff it's just a flat outright all levels eight seconds i love it yep and sounds good Last Zeus movement speed increased by five, so he's right. three hundred move speed. So he's like a pretty average fast hero now. Yes, yeah, so we found where CM's move speed went. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, and so those are all the changes just disappeared into the ether. Yep. All right, lots of good. small buffs, small nerfs. So let's talk yep. about what you're going to do this week. And uh, no, we're going to play the game, and then we're going to talk after. Uh, okay. All right, let's we're do pretty that. Pretty much at time. So I mean, I'm going to play Lone Druid like I've been playing Lone Druid. All right, we're good. All right, hello everyone. Welcome Thank to you. the second part. We have just completed our game. It was a, it was loss. not the worst game we've played. It was a well, loss. It was, it was it not was a great, great game. It wasn't great. Uh, it wasn't great. Particularly we'll it it wasn't great. frustrating uh, and not fun. Um, yeah, but well, we tried. I I had fun for a time. Yeah, I never had fun ever. I had like two good chronos that were fun, but let's yeah. how the team comes first. So the enemy team. They had an offlane tide. Well, what did you play first? Let's. Uh... Well, I played faceless void in these team comps. I mean, in the I was going to get to that for a in reason. I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure there was a reason behind it. We needed something. Um, we anyway, needed okay. something in the offlane. Yeah. Okay. Um, the enemy team. They had an offlane tide hunter, a middle dragon knight, 
In a safe lane tri lane of Lycan, Dazzle, and Bane, the Dazzle and Bane ended up roaming. Well, actually, the Bane ended up roaming. The Dazzle was mostly still in the jungle and in my lane. Um, but he TP'd a few times. Uh, our team had a safe lane tri lane of Lone Druid, played by Proud, of course, uh, Vengeful yep. Spirit, and a Shadow Demon. And, of course, I think they random Shadow Demon. Uh, so, you know, that bodes well, Something of like course. That. And we had a mid lane Quap, which conveniently we were talking about earlier. And I played offlane Faceless Void. And so it was a loss. It was a 44-minute game. Basically what happened was, let's see, we got out team fought. We did not have vision, so the Lycan just, like, walked through and killed everybody. He got a Bloodthorn at one point, and suddenly our whole team was held yeah, at his that mercy. Was pretty funny. And then, like, the game was unplayable once he had Bloodthorn. My lane was unplayable because, boy, Lycan had 1,200 health at six minutes and, and uh, like, 30 yeah. regen. And Faceless is not a, a good offlaner, so that didn't help either. Um, yeah. I mean, Faceless isn't that bad of an offlaner. He's, like, he hasn't been changed that much since bad. he was, like, a standard offlaner. Yeah, it's just the entirety of offlane changed. Uh, and, like, I mean, the meta of heroes changed. I... I I it wasn't like that he was bad. okay when you were just like comboing with him and stuff, but like no, he got nerfed like often and significantly. He's Did not he? a good offlaner. Yeah, dude, I thought his he got, base like, damage smaller. got shit on like a hundred times, and you can't start poor man shield anymore because there's no shrine. Like a lot of bad and like jungling now just sucks. Like he was one of those offlaners that was like, oh, this lane's hard. I'll get a an iron talent and like do a couple camps and then you know do my lane again. But that yeah, just that true. got nerfed to shit now. It's awful. Um and and yeah, like he's just. He's, he's rough. Like other heroes, just do a lot more than, okay. than him. He's, I, he's not an offlaner. I was so my, my ideas offlane wise uh, were basically faces void or Earthshaker because we needed some form of team fight, and like I couldn't like I couldn't Centaur, pick Clockwork. Mag. You could have Mag was fine. What's wrong with Mag? What's fine? Clock, like, clock, we would have just gotten kited around. I would have tried to, like, isolate what? something, like but the they had opposite. a Bane and a, d- a Dazzle. I No, dude, like, you get Clockwork against Lycan, that's awesome. If he has to walk around cogs and shit, or, like, is locked in them, that's a, that's sweet. That's a great situation. I mean, I guess and so, it's but... like a Disable that Tide can't just crack and shell out of? Tide, also, Tide I thought our, our team had pretty good damage to throw into Chrono. Like, we had a Quop that got quite fed, um... That's about like, it, though. Like, Shadow Demon doesn't throw damage into Chrono. Yeah, I mean, he and amps Quop, damage in Chrono. Quop doesn't even really... Like, Quop throws an ulti into Chrono, but that's about it. Like, her E is pretty small around her, and it takes a while to build up damage. I mean... I don't know. But she had the damage built up. Like, all, yeah. every single fight we won was because of a Chrono, basically. Well, I mean, when your entire hero is just a Chrono, if you don't get a good Chrono, then you're gonna lose every fight, is how I would phrase it. Phrase it. Uh, I mean, I guess so. Um... The... It's like every every fight we won with Enigma was because of the black holes. Like, well, yeah, that's the that's the hero. Like, yeah. every fight we won with Lone Druid was because of Lone Druid doing damage. Like, yeah, that's that's all your hero does. Of course, if your hero doesn't do anything, we're gonna lose the fight. Uh, okay. Well, regardless, I think Faces is fine. I did not realize how miserable the Faces like in matchup would be because the hero is yeah. just so tanky. Like Faceless. Like, he still has the great offlane mechanic of being able to reset his health, but yeah. Lycan just peppered me with hits every so often, right. and, like, yeah, the, I can't harass a Lycan with, like, 18 regen or whatever. Yeah, there's, like, different kind of tiers of, of off or, like, I don't know, uh, there, there's several methods of, like, being a decent offlaner. One of them is, like, oh, I can fucking 1v1 your carry easy, so you have to keep your supports here to deal with it, and I'll trade with you super well, like, like Legion. Like, Legion can 1v1 almost anyone in melee. Axe, similarly. Um, and Faceless is, like, really similar, except that he's just a bit less can 1v1 any carry than a lot of the safe lane carries are at this point. Like, Lycan's health regen, like, he has 5 health regen once he gets to level 5. He, oh, no, he has 4 built, he has 4 health regen at level, at level 3. And then he also has, like, a shield and he has, like, 80 damage or whatever. And Faceless used to start with, like, 68 damage or some shit, but it kept getting nerfed. And now it's, like, it's, like, 59 or something, like, 10 less than he used to have almost. Um, so yeah, like Faceless's ability to just shit on any carry that he sees in the in the off lane is just like much less. And as soon as he can't one v one the enemy carry, he's just not an off laner anymore. He's just a carry that's sitting there not getting anything. Uh yeah, and so that didn't go great. Um, overall, the Lycan got a couple of big items. We had like 
very limited ability to control him and he just kind of yeah. rampaged through everybody except for you and yeah but was, like yeah it was a little, little brutal but yeah i mean if he if he runs like so if shadow demon uses his q and then oh well, excuse me <clears throat> if shadow demon uses his q and then lycan pops up like there's this we i mean not to make this the lycan podcast but there's this weird thing about how fucking fast lycan moves that it's actually just hard to hit him with anything. Like, you're yeah. having this issue with Chronosphere. Like, when I'm playing Lycan against a CM, basically what I do is I just, like, I run at her, and then I basically can just, like, run in a circle, or, like, go forward, go back, and then go forward again. And, like, it's actually hard for her mouse to keep track of me when she's trying to Frostbite, that I can just, like, keep going in and out, and then, like, eventually she'll look at something else, and then I, you know, go from behind and, and get her, and she can't turn around in time. Like, that's how crazy Lycan is. And then you add in, like, the Venge stun is like a projectile and shit, and he has a shadow blade. And Shadow Demon's trying to use uh, his his Q to stop um, like a fiend's grip or something. And this is like it's just too much shit. And then Lycan just finds an opening and everyone dies. And I'm like in the middle of trying to lock down their Dragon Knight or whatever. And then they stun my bear, and then Lycan kills everyone. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry, everyone. Yeah, it and was that, just that was, miserable. Like, yeah, it, everyone I died to their Lycan. Lycan. Yeah, like, that I, like an absolutely completely like single handedly won them this game. Like, no, yeah, no, no you, lie. You're you're not wrong. I mean, Ravage certainly helped, but there's no doubt that kind of like like the way you play a Sven is you look for the opening in a team fight, blink in, and you just like clear everyone. That Lycan just looked for the opening in a team fight, and wow, let me tell you, a Dragon Knight sieging your base while a Ravage is going off is a great opportunity for a Lycan to come in from behind, shadow bladed out of the lane that Srax had already been taken and to kill all your supports and Bloodthorn your face's void and then kill him too. The one thing I want to say about this game was it was super depressing that the Queen of Pain didn't just go the standard uh, Veil uh, Lincolns. Because like you're against a Dragon Knight, you go you go Lincolns against Dragon Knight. It's got one single target spell and it's like a five second stun. Uh, Bane, he's Scaffine's grip. I know he has other things that can break it, but if you're a positioning hero like Quap, it's not that hard to be, you know, far away from Enfeeble and Brain Sap. Because, I mean, the Fiend's Grip is like the long, it's, it's like a longer range than everything else, right? Like, I'm not crazy. What, Brain sure Sap? No, Fiend's Grip is a longer range than every all of his other spells. Yes. And he yeah. had Aether Lens, and uh, presumably he probably, let me see. Yeah. I want to see saying, if he like, took his talent for it. Let's see, Fiend's Grip, cast range, 625. That's actually not as long as I thought it was. Okay, Nightmare goes up to 650. Um, also, and, like, Fiend's and, Grip and is one of those spells... Okay, never mind. Yeah, I mean, Feeble's crazy long, yeah. But uh, yeah. And Fiend's Grip is also one of those spells with a decently long animation, so, like, you can cast it starting when they are, you know, 600, whatever, and then yeah. they can get to, yeah, like, 700 I'm just, or whatever. I'm just talking about, like, in, did you li- were you listening to me? Yeah, maybe. Okay, I don't know, it's, like, like crazy slightly. thundering outside it. Okay, I'm, that's a decent excuse. I was just saying that, like, Lincoln's on Quap was, was the thing to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And yet, they absolutely. did have a, a number of single-target spells to stop her or whatever, but, I mean, she has Blink, so her positioning is allowed to be good. And, like, yeah, so she's a good position. Like, you just, you just try, to, yeah, yeah. Just try to it's avoid just... getting enfeebled, and everything else that you block is going to be a big deal. It was one of those games where the game was somewhat competitive but then one person got a single item and then the game was just yeah. like well okay no hard. let's let's also we didn't, say we were not prepared for that item we, we got raxed at like 20 minutes for no reason yeah we let's let's not forget about that because there was uh there was like we were splitting and someone tp'd in and i was fine um and then or rather like i was split pushing a dragonite was there i just started punching him or whatever not wearing i was like okay all right people are starting to come i'm, I'm gonna get out of here and then, like, I double my bear back to fear people away from the shadow demon. Or no, so, like, some shit's happening. And then, like, you jump in and Chrono. We're like, all right, Chrono's out. We're good. Let's get back. And then the shadow demon is still just, like, chilling, dying for no reason. Like, well, I guess I'll just I'll fear them away so shadow demon doesn't die. And then a fucking shadow bladed lichen already in wolf form comes out of nowhere and just starts nipping at my Heelys. And I'm like, I used my fear. It's used. I'm I'm dead because I tried to like we spent a chrono and my fear on this fucking shadow demon yeah. and then we die and lose a Rax because of it and like that felt bad I mean it was like the right thing to do because we didn't assume there would just be a fucking lichen straight up coming out of our mid tier two from yeah, nowhere with a mask and, of madness dealing a thousand damage with thirty yeah. hundred health and because like I'm I'm fine like I can survive that it's just like I was out of bear form for pretty much no reason and my fear was down. For also, I mean, I'm gonna say no. I mean, it was to save the shadow demon, 
But this 2800, 1, 10, and 13 Shadow Demon, I'm going to chalk that up as no reason. Uh, yeah, and, he was and incredibly I incompetent. I, it, I, it was I, a little unfortunate. Not I just, not, yeah. I mean, oh, you're playing God. Shadow Demon, like, you got it, like, Q, it's like Astral Imprisonment, and what's that shit called? A- egg. Egg. Yeah, Q and Egg. Egg, uh, that's what it's called. It's called Egg. Yeah, it's called egg, Disruption. Egg and Astral Imprisonment are those kinds of abilities that, like, they can either save your team or destroy your team. But there are yeah. some very obvious ways you use them. But if you just don't know what the fuck you're doing, you're just afraid to use it ever outside of like, yeah. I'm going to kill this guy and egg him. But yeah, you never used it to save anyone. It was very depressing. If, and yeah, uh, yeah that, that's oh, the game. If you're I mean, 2800, I don't random in a 4100 average game. Yeah, for that, that was also the Christ. thing. Like if you're, if you're playing party, if you're like a thousand MMR better than your friends, like don't let them mid, you know? Like don't do that. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a fight like because like the um, I mean, the Queen of Pain, Pain played like, OK, but I imagine a better player. I mean, I, I think this quap was just into the fact that she could right click like that. That was a concept that yeah. she could enjoy. She just had like she had Treads Veil, which was cool, but then went for like fucking Bloodthorn AC Maelstrom. Like, I don't I'm not sure about that. Progress. Maybe she has a BKB, which is cool, but maybe get a that's her final item. She never used it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Ten seconds still left on on that one. That's exciting. Um. Oh no, that's it just shows like that. She probably used it once, I'm sure. Yeah. Anyway, um, let's not complain about these humans anymore. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about my boy. I don't know if you really want to talk about Void. Um he's no. not an offlaner, so it would be a pretty weird conversation to have if you're trying to speak like prescriptively. It was um, fine. Uh, it's just like the matchup was bad. I mean, I still farmed. Like Yeah, it's once it's like, the support's it's, left, it's I still situ- farmed. Yeah. I mean your yeah, your farm wasn't you had two sixty GPM, dude. I don't know about that. Well, yeah, because eventually I couldn't farm anywhere because you and Quap ate everything off the map and I would yeah, constantly true. be dying. Did. It is but, pretty unfortunate to have an offlaner that that you know, that could be the result. I mean, we huh? it's just we like didn't have map control and stuff. That's why I couldn't farm anything. Yeah. But like yeah, you, in, what, what if you were an offlaner that like didn't need to farm you know well then we'd be screwed because we have some random quap that like never t- shows up to fight so we don't deal damage uh i mean hey let's see how much damage did you do i 5, enabled 000? a lot of damage with chronospheres yeah. and mm-hmm. i did damage and you did my less solar crest damage damage than the damage. spirit yeah a lot of heroes can build those items buddy <laughs> i'm just saying like if you were a centaur or a magnus or any offlaner in the game that was good you would have had a better time i'm just like i don't want to play freaking centaur dude well i just i named magnus timbersaw would have been acceptable that I game i think no um, timbersaw are you kidding Underlord me would have been okay yeah dude timbersaw against lycan you wouldn't have your fucking problem I'll yeah tell you my that. lane would go well and nothing else dude you're against fucking dragon knight lycan and tidehunter and you don't think timbersaw would be decent i would just get massacred by the billion minus armor from dazzle the constant cc the Bloodthorns, etc. Yeah, okay, assuming that the Dazzle no is like, of, all right, like, time to put Weave fighting. on them, and now let's wait a few seconds. All right, it's building up. We're about ready to go now. Like, that's not how it's going to work. You're going to okay. pop in and do your oogly boogly. You're going yeah, okay. to do if well, I'm, and you're going to get a Shiva's. Look, I'm just saying you had options that weren't If I'm playing Timbers on this game, fair? dude, we lose 30 minutes instead of 44 minutes. That's... Well, at least we have a chance to win, right? No, we don't. That, that I mean, Timbersaw okay. If 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 we if we knew in the head that this lichen was just that much better than you, then yeah, like trying to compete for the lane with a Timbersaw maybe wouldn't have worked out. But I I am unconvinced that Timbersaw wouldn't have been better. And that, that's not even like the best. I mean, I'm saying that the like the best safest option would have been like. Clock, uh, I mean, Clockwork like was Magnus. what I was thinking initially. Yeah, cl- clock, clock, clock was definitely the way to go. Clock is a way better off laner, and he's, he's just really good in like, general. Shaker is fine too. I just yeah, Shaker yeah, was I mean, what I clock wanted to been play. The best. It's. I mean, I'm just. I'm just from personal experience. Timbersaw against Lycan is fucking miserable, and he was able to do all that crazy shit because he really just didn't need a BKB at all that game, which was a little depressing. Like what he only needed BKB to stop. Let's see, Venge stun, which lasts like a second, and Shadow Demon egging, which he can't even die during. And then besides that, I'm like, I'm doing BKB piercing disable. You're doing BKB piercing disable. Quap's ulti is BKB piercing, and he doesn't give a shit about silence through Bloodborne. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, we know Faceless is a bad offlaner. I'm glad we could establish that. No. So about Lone Druid, he he's like very situational. Can we at least say that? Like, he, yeah. I mean, he was not the right offlaner in this in this situation, but he's not some like objectively terrible offlaner that's like unplayably mm. bad or some nonsense yeah. like that. I, I I'm okay with him. And like with certain scenarios where like, oh, we have a very uh like a very fighty oriented safe lane. Like if we have a uh, maybe not a like bristleback a Lone Druid? exactly. 
No, I mean, I also scale super late game. Um, but I mean, Lone Troop has faced us. Obviously, I mean, I don't have to describe to you how bad the synergy is there when you drop a chrono. And I'm like, well, OK, I'll just be here inside the chrono. There was one time where it worked out. But yeah, uh, at least one time. Literally one time, but sure. OK, one time. But I now we got to yeah, use like, like three of them. Yeah, I got Bloodthorned it, every fight after that, and that's why yeah, we were losing well, fights. Yeah, well, hey, yeah, another game where a Lincolns or Manta would have been great, but... I was working a, on a Manta. Or, had, or just you, you a freaking Shadow Man could have egged crest. me. Like, yeah, I mean, that, that also would have been a good thing to do. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's... Like, there's no real itemization that you can go there that's great. Like, the Vlads, I think you kind of just need. Treads you need. I feel like maybe you might have just not gone Crest, even though it's so broken. But you would have had to be able to predict that, oh, hey, I'm not going to get any fucking farm this game. Also, uh, I'm going to need a Lincolns or a Manta immediately. Or just like BKB, you know, something like that. Like, uh, I mean, that's, that's, I all, that's all hindsight. I know? didn't expect like, the Bloodthorn either. But like the Solar yeah, Crest was oh, me neither, really sure. huge in a lot of these fights. Yeah, no, it was, it was definitely good. Like Solar Crest is an amazing item. I'm just saying that in terms of like, if, at, if, if you didn't get something to dispel their silences or whatever, or stop getting stunned and shit like that, like then there's just no way we, we win this game. But if the game okay. was decent, then you would have, I mean, you would have got your man to just fine. Like, your Yasha was done. You had a Blade of Alacrity for some reason. Um, so, I'm, I mean, if the game was decent, then, you know, and we didn't get racks to 20 minutes for no reason, then you would have had a Manta when it was necessary. Yeah. Most likely. Sure. Anyway. Okay. All right. Let's, let's talk about, let's talk about, about my hero. Yeah. So, um, so Lone Druid's dope. One of, so I like, I start, I start stout shield on him on him now i'm just like i, I go safe lane for the most part mid's okay it's just i prefer safe lane and the hero actually really does scale fucking amazingly now um but yeah I, I just start like stout shield tango south and i always go a fairy fire um his damage is a little low at level one an extra two damage can go a long way um especially when like i mean you're you're fighting for every hit with this with this hero. like every single thing you do uh, your units combined you hit for like 80 damage right um so every little bit of extra damage you get and it's it but your damage is like split up, so it's still blocked by um by poor man shield and shit. So what you want is like if your bear hits for 30, it hits for 10. If your hero hits for you know 42, it hits for like 20. So you want to add a little bit of damage if you can. And then also Druid is one of those heroes, like you you have the defensive mini- uh, measure maneuver? Yeah, no. defensive measures in Savage Roar. And it just so happens that you just kind of end up at a Excuse me. You just kind of end up at a point where if anyone's ever killing you, they like just barely pull it off, um, and that's just like I don't know my, my experience. You oh you never like excess kill alone, Jared. You like just barely gets under tower, and then the last melee attack gets him or some shit like that. So fairy fire saves you like an inordinate amount of time, and then besides that, you have a ton of item slots. So whatever plus two damage for seventy gold, I'll take it. Um, yeah, then you get, you get quelling blade, and then just like in lane, you get. Um, Orb of Venom and Boots, and then you just try to get level 5 as fast as possible and keep punching nerds with, with Entangle. And then you go Phase Boots after that, because that's the kind of boy I am. And uh, then you just, like, kill the offlaner as soon as you have Phase Boots on your bear. And then a, uh, you've got, like, Phase Boots, Orb of Venom on a... Let's see, how much fucking move speed does this nerd have? Let's level this bear up. Let's summon it. Halo Bear, you have 340 move speed base? Holy shit, who made you? And then you put some boots on it? It's 385 move speed. You activate Phase Boots? 477 move speed? Holy shit! So you have like a fucking 477 move speed bear that's running at you with entangle. And if you're good, like every, I think it's like after I get four entangles, I have a pretty solid, or rather four right clicks that aren't an entangle. I have a really solid chance of getting an entangle after because of pseudo RNG. So I just like, you know, last hit a full creep wave, four hits, and then I start poking them with my bear and then I get an entangle in like two or three hits. And you just keep doing that. Eventually you get a free kill. Um, yeah, and I just keep leveling up, like, you know, stack and pull that you can, like, push with your hero and last hit with your hero, and then stack and pull with your bear, so your control is super easy, and, uh, eventually the offlaner's just gonna leave, and then you just deny everything. Like, the, I was saying this to Sam earlier, but, like, the main thing that people aren't really thinking of in terms of, um, in terms of, like, the deny change is it's not so much that, like, denies are more important in a 1v1 perspective. Like, yeah, leveling up feels better than stopping someone else from leveling up. But overall, like the experience swing of of a deny used to be like um, it was like rather I, I don't exactly know how to phrase it, but there's the number like two hundred percent and one eighty five percent, and the one eighty five is like kind of what the experience swing is now, or something like that, and two hundred is is what it used to be. Oh yeah, yeah, it's if okay if you deny an entire wave now. Um, and the enemy doesn't deny any of theirs. So if you get a full wave and they get half a wave, you're getting 200% of the experience they are. Now, if you deny a full wave and they don't deny anything, uh, you get 185 of the experience you used to. 
and they get you know more more than yeah that's that's yeah. how it works so it's it's like ex- 1v1 denying is actually a bit less important outside of the fact that you know it speeds you up like people overall are getting more experience there's no zero sum game shit going on but uh if if it's just like if i'm lone druid and i've already fucked up their offlane or their offlane just leaves and now i get to last hit every creep and deny every creep that's like that's better there used to be no reason to deny when you were uncontested but now like if you leave someone uncontested they're just getting way more than, than they used to like now being uncontested means you don't just get every last hit you get every last hit and extra experience that you never used to get before so i end up getting my levels super fast and this hero's talents are absurd level 10 one whatever 250 health not that big a deal but as soon as i hit 15 plus 50 spirit bear damage holy shit man that's absurd like 50 fucking damage what that's a big number sam it's yeah, a big I mean, one. It's a lot of damage. 50? At level 15? What? This is big. Yeah, so I, I just kind of do that. Um, yeah, I mean, as far as the build goes, it's not too crazy. I don't really like Radiance, except when I do. But it's, it's like, if I'm against three melees and it doesn't look like I'm going to farm a shit ton, I may just get, like, Midas and go for Radiance. And then you go, like, Radiance. Um, I like Ra- Radiance, Hyperstone. Or, yeah, Radiance, Hyperstone, Solar Crest, AC. And then maybe the Mask of Madness, if you're into that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just kind of just kind of build, and then you have like a shit ton of evasion. But the main build, oh excuse me, I keep like half burping. That's the main good. build that I'm super into that's good for this patch is like uh, I go I go maelstrom into so I have like um, I have phase boots, brown boots on my hero, and then a bassy for pushing slash mana regen. I've been thinking about switching the bassy out or the bassy for a for just like a medallion because that's also a mana regen item and it's not too much more expensive. But I just get sense. like a really. Yeah, it's it, it like it might be cool. I'm just not sure because like getting the armor on both units is kind of a big deal at, at some point. And like pushing is pushing is important, dude. Like you got to push. I mean, you can you know put medallion on creeps and that also helps. But like the two armor aura, super good. And like I don't know if like the safe laner is almost always the hero that goes bassy, right? Like if you have uh, if you have a jug, like you you probably don't have a shadow fiend mid. I mean, you might, but it's like shadow fiend is one of the only heroes that goes bassy that's mid. For the most part, there's like a sniper and shit, but like, I mean, OD yeah. isn't, Invoker probably isn't, Quap, all that shit. Anyway, Offlaners, did, like Void? Yeah, like Void, the <laughs> best off, yeah. I mean, like Axe and Centaur and Magnus Abaddon. and Darkseer are not, uh, Abba, well, if if he's going Vlad's, yeah, but I mean, if he's going like Midas Radiance and shit, nah. Yeah, so I, I mean, I still like going Bassy on the hero, and also it just feels comfy, and if you ever do go Vlad's on LD, it's nice. But yeah, so you have like, Brown Boots, Bassy, Phase, uh... Phase Orb of Venom, Quelling, Stout on your Bear Bear. And then you just you build a build a Maelstrom. And you do you farm fast as shit. Lone Druid has like a lot of really cool things. Like um he basically can can move around the jungle like an anti-mage. Like your bear is hitting uh your bear is hitting creeps. And this is something like I've coached people on Lone Druid a couple times, and we just like I just show them how to fucking jungle on Lone Druid. Like your bear's hitting shit, and then you're like you're stutter stepping with your hero. So like if the uh I don't know, you're like moving across the line from one side of the camp to the other side, and then as soon as the camp dies. You like you recall your bear and then it's right at the other camp and then you keep like doing that little the lone druid shuffle as you keep stutter step and throwing glaives and then your body gets to the next camp and then you blink your bear or you recall your bear after that and it's like you just farm fast as shit and that's the idea you just have maelstrom you farm fast as shit take that into mjolnir because attack speed is really good because sometimes you don't have rabbit up and it's very painful and then you have a fucking like a bear with mjolnir and it's attacking real fast with entangling claws and you you know mjolnir the bear when it's taking a ton of damage if you're sieging me only your friends just really get active uh and then i just take that into basher and then i have fucking like hella attack speed and i have two bkb piercing disables on my bear and he just mauls everything to death it's dope uh, and then you know from there you either go ac or um either ac or moon shard if you need the armor you go ac if you just want to keep stunning motherfuckers you go moon shard and then you get mkb after it's good stuff yeah you get the armor talent or whatever like because you can get that plus 12 armor on your bear you can actually just you can just skip AC unless you really need the armor like we did that game against uh against the lycanthrope. Um and also if you're against a shit ton of evasion like you almost always are, which is one of the main reasons I'm super into Lone Druid, like instead of Mjolnir Basher, you can just go Mjolnir MKB. And like everyone's got a solar crest at like 13 minutes and everyone's building fucking like now people are hype on the fact that they can build a uh, Halberd again and there's like a radiance in the game because someone's playing Naga. And it's of just and, and fucking Sven has a twenty percent evasion talent or some yep. shit like that. Well, it's just everything it's just circles awful. back to evasion, dude. Everyone has evasion now, and so one of the cool things about Lone Druid is he's one of the only heroes that can actually comfortably build like a second item MKB, and you get it at like you know thirty minutes comfortably. Whereas yeah. you're playing like you know Sven, it's like oh, I'm gonna go like 
bleh, mask blink or mask S and Y blink BKB. And I want I want a I want, I want Bloodthorn, but it's like three people with evasion. So I guess I need an MKB. Like that's not where you want to be. You want to be lone druid. And you go, I'm gonna get him y'all near, and I'm gonna get MKB, and then I'm done. And I got it. And then I'll get like an AC or some shit like that. It's it great. Yes, yeah, so dope. It's uh, super fun. He's really good. The only, I guess the only game I've lost on him in a really long time, like, since he's been good, was this one game uh, where our 3k went mid and their tier 7 Battle Cup winning Lycan beat a faceless Void offlane. Go figure. Yes, yep. Oh, yeah, and okay, the other shit you do. So you go Tranquil Boots on the bear, so, like, you're, you're slow as shit now that you don't have Rabbit all the time. But Tranquil Boots, like, got a huge move speed increase. You don't need the armor anyway. It doesn't give armor anymore. Who gives a shit? So you go Tranquils, and then you just get another Windlace. So you've got, like, 90 move speed on your Tranquils, another 20 for the Windlace. So, yeah, your bear form is slow as shit, but once you get fucking plus 110 move speed, you're all right. It's okay. It doesn't matter anymore. So I'm just, like, hella move speed. I got a Bassy. I don't really go Blightstone on my bear because, you know, whatever, it's 300 gold. You just need, like, the whole deal is you get Maelstrom, and then you just farm like a motherfucker. Anyone who can flash farm this patch is doing good. And Lone Druid actually scales super well late game now. Because everyone, like, everyone, I, I say this a shit ton, but one of the big changes from 7-0 was that, or in 7-0, I guess, going to it, was that, every, like, people can't scale stats anymore. Stats got replaced by talents, right? Yeah. And for a lot of heroes, that was, like, a big buff. Um, like, a lot of supports, not super into scaling stats, but the fact that they can do, get, like, crazy shit, like, uh, Jakiro gets fucking another second and a half on, on, uh, on Ice Path. Yeah. That's way better than stats, dude. Like, fucking X, 25 XP gain, 130, 125 cast range, gold per minute, and fucking ice path duration. Shit, yeah, dude, that's way better than stats on a Jakiro. Yeah, but, stuns are my favorite stats. Yeah, stuns are a good stat. But then you look at a hero like Luna, and it's like, uh, Luna Luna was pretty into those stats. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. but And that's, like, what you're competing with. So Luna actually, like, she traded out, what, 20 stats? Um, and she gets plus 15 all stats at 25. But that's like, that's her 25 talent now. It's just recovering some of those stats that she lost. So it's like, Lone Druid, on the other hand, gained, didn't gain shit. Like, the bear got literally fucking nothing. All the stats were, it was like, you have some extra health now and some armor. But it sucks. Like, you're already tanky as shit. Your issue is your bear dying. So, like, I lost stats, and it doesn't matter. And, all, and my bear just, like, I gained 250 health for fun, which is basically, like, the amount of health that stats were going to give me at level 10. And my bear gains 50 damage that he just didn't fucking have before. My bear gains 12 armor that you just didn't fucking have before. And then I get like, oh, either Savage War cooldown or one and a half second entangle duration, like for free. So that's that's cool. Like I, you know, my bear is strong, way stronger than he ever was. Uh, he's got a base attack time buff and you just buy Maelstrom and you fucking farm the jungle. And it's dope. Yeah, I mean, it was good. Regardless of our many manifold problems in this game, it, yeah. it was definitely a convincing like LD strong. LD is a strong hero game. Yeah, we strong uh, boy. All right, so I think that's good. We're long as shit this episode. Yeah, we are. Well, it's like an hour and a half. It's meant it's yeah, understandable. Oh, we, we've it's had longer li- episodes. It's slightly long for us, which is a statement. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let's do some plugs. So you can follow sure. each of us on Twitter. I'm at Arsini. Proud is at Proud Dota. Our show is at dot p underscore show. You can go to our website defensethepatients.com. On there, there's an Amazon banner at the bottom. You can also get a free Prime trial from that Amazon banner, I do believe. Uh, we also have our store, of course, uh, where you get shirts. We got some new shirts coming out, uh, some of them based on things we say here on Theory Crafting Thursday. Uh, Theory Craft Thursday, excuse me. I repent. Uh, we have a Patreon. That is how this show is supported primarily through patreon.com slash defense of the patients. Uh, you can get all kinds of things there as well. Uh, what else? You can email us questions for the Tuesday Q&A, or you can show up uh, using our Discord, discord.gg slash dot p, and our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash dot ptv. That is a 9 p.m. Eastern Monday night recording, and it's fun. We dress up. Let's see. What else? What uh, What else do we do, Proud? Um, if you're getting replay reviews and you want me to do them instead of Sam, we said this on the Patreon episode, and if you're a Patreon, that's the only reason you're getting replay reviews, but anyway... If you want me to do your replay review, if you have a carry game or something and you don't want someone to go in there and say, actually, you should be playing Faceless Void in the offlane, uh, then you, you can give them to me. I don't I don't really do them, but if you want me to, I will. You know, I don't I don't want Sam to do everything. I need to do something right. So if you want me to do a replay review? Fucking ask me. All right. Please send in all your Faceless Void replay reviews to at Ursinity on Twitter. Um, yeah, all offlane Faceless Void replay. If you just want positive reinforcement, yeah, send it to Sam. It'll be like, none of this is your fault. None of it. Oh man, I'm mean to people. None of it. In general. 
Like yeah. the replay reviews, they are not particularly pleasant all the time. All right. Are we done? Uh, Can I anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for having fun. And, uh, and remember, this has been our theory and blame and your co-op or your shadow or, demon. Or your awesome case of void. <laughs>